Welcome Bethel family to Sunday night, 6 p.m. Who's ready to have a good time tonight? Yes. Man, it is such a privilege every single week to gather with this amazing, amazing family. Man, and we are even more than ever before expectant for the Lord to show up tonight. Uh, Tonight is going to be a night of encounter. It is going to be a night full of His presence. Uh, And tonight may just be the night that everything changes. Uh, We've been praying uh, before the service, and we've just been feeling the Scripture. Uh, This is in Acts 2, verse 16. It says, This is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God has declared, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Why don't you say all flesh? And your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. No one is disqualified from a touch from the Holy Spirit. And so tonight we're going to host His presence. We're going to love on the Holy Spirit. But I want you to believe that He is ready to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. So why don't you turn to someone next to you and say hi, welcome them. And I want you just to pray for them. If they haven't had a touch from the Holy Spirit, pray, get them, God.
the shadow of death I'll feel. Come on, sing it out over your life. Even when I walk through the valley, the shadow of death I'll feel. No, I'll look it dead in the face. Even though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death I'll. Come on, sing it over. Whatever's in your life. And I'm 
I'm sorry When I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry When I just say another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you mm -hmm. And I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry When I forgot that you're enough Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence And I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this world just want and nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do and I just want
Jesus for me, for me, only Jesus, only Jesus for me, for me, oh greater friend than Jesus, for me, for me, only Jesus. Sufficiency, my soul sufficiency. 
sorry, God, for the ways I've tried to take your place. I'm sorry, God. I repent. You deserve the 
Thank you, Jesus. Just in this same place, just, just lift up your head and just gaze upon Jesus. The Holy Spirit, He opens our eyes to see the Lamb of God so that we can behold the Lamb. Just invite the Holy Spirit right now. Come and open my eyes, Holy Spirit, so that I might see Jesus rightly. Glorify Jesus. And just as you take the moment to gaze, why don't you just begin to sing your own song of worship to Him. There is nothing better you could do right now than to sing a song of worthiness. Colossians 1 18 says that he is the head of the body of the church he is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead so that he himself will come to have first place in everything for it was the father's good pleasure for all fullness to dwell in him when we in faith to the worthiness of Jesus, when we sing about the nature of the Lord, when we sing about His faithfulness, His goodness, His holiness, His righteousness, He is the hope, He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life. When we sing about the nature of God, faithful and true is, your, is His name. He cannot depart from His character. He is love, He is grace, He is mercy. When we begin to sing those things, Everything in our life that wants to come against it, what happens is when we begin to sing those things and we behold Jesus, those things that were impossible before, they begin to be transformed as they look at who Jesus is. The Word of God says, Be holy for I am holy. That is an invitation to look at the holiness of Jesus and say, I have done nothing to be holy, but you have done everything. And as I look at you and receive your blood, your cross and your resurrection, I am changed and transformed. And it is the Holy Spirit in us that begins 
begins to do the work as we look at the power and the worthiness of Jesus. And so what we're going to do right now in faith, we are going to look above the things that want to conflict with who Jesus is. And we are going to begin to lift up the name of Jesus above and we're going to attach our faith to who Jesus is and who He is for us. Once you begin to lift up, just begin to lift up shouts of praise right now. Just begin to lift up words of thanksgiving. Of the word of the gospel that says it is by your stripes that we are healed. 
it is by the lashings on your back that we are restored. That you were bruised for our transgressions and you were beaten, God, so that we could become free. It was your punishment that brought our peace. Oh, our depression is bowing today. Anxiety bows today. It was his punishment that brought your peace. That tormenting voice that bows today in Jesus' name. And we grab hold of the garment of Jesus. And we receive. Just pray for the people around you just for a moment. Just pray for a breakthrough right now. We lift high the name of Jesus. He anoints your head with oil and your cup runs over. For He is a river of life. He anoints your head with oil. He is more than enough. He fills you to overflowing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just place your hand on the people beside you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. God, we thank you that you are a river. God, that when, when you anoint us, God, with the power of your Holy Spirit, we overflow, not because of what originated inside of us, because you are a river and you begin to flow in us and you flow out of us. Right now, just begin to pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit so we can see Jesus. Oh, He's giving us fresh eyes, fresh ears to see and behold the worthiness, the beauty, the power of Jesus. He is anointing us with the Holy Spirit so we can know Jesus. We can see Him rightly. deep and personal intimacy the Lord is releasing eyes to see ears to hear heart to know just begin to pray for the person next to you a fresh anointing of the oil of the Lord the oil of gladness the oil of His presence Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, we we receive your fullness today. And we receive the word that says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We receive that you are high and lifted up above every power and principality. Jesus, you are beautiful. You are powerful. You are faithful. You are truthful. You are better than we could dream, think, or imagine. Holy Spirit, open our eyes so that we might behold the one who is holy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is getting wild up front here. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Holy Spirit. Why don't you just take a moment, just put your hand on your heart. I just feel this just right now. Just say, Jesus, I want to know your fullness. Holy Spirit, help me to see Jesus rightly, to know the Father. Amen. Amen. Would you hug somebody next to you? Bless them. As you make your way back to your seats, can we just thank the worship team? Thanks, team.
Thank you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> If it is your first time visiting with us, we just want to welcome you. Would you raise your hand? We just want to say thank you for coming to visit. I see some hands over there. If you're in town for Leaders Advance, welcome. We pray that tonight will be a night of great breakthrough and encounters for you. Great breakthrough and encounters for you. What's up? <laughs> Thanks, God. Thanks, God. All right, well, as you make your way back to your seats, we're gonna, we're gonna take up offering, and on Sunday night, we, we rush the buckets. That means we bring our offering up to the front, and um, tonight's gonna be a bit different and a bit unique because as we rush the buckets. We're actually going to play two uh, videos for you to watch. One, I believe, is church news, and the other's around missions, and afterwards we're going to uh, do some prayer around missions. But uh, I, I have a firm belief in, uh, in God's voice, so I don't actually believe in coincidence. I believe in God's voice, and uh, I don't believe it's a coincidence that we're watching two videos during offering because God wants more than your money. He's not worried about your money, actually. You know, we, we sang, you can have it all, God. You can have all of me. And God wants all of you because it's the best possible thing for us. The safest place is an absolute yieldedness and abandon to Him. He is trustworthy. He is so trustworthy. And I tell you, he's got some surprises in store for you. <laughs> Even tonight, like there is a, there's a high level of the prophetic in the room. I don't know what Bob's has been doing, but there's a high level of the prophetic in this room. And uh, God's, he is so eager to speak to you. And, and tonight I believe some people are gonna hear his voice with such deep clarity, deep, deep clarity. So I'm going to pray for the offering. As I, as I finish off, we're going to rush the buckets. That means you're going to bring your offering up forward and we're going to play two videos. And if you could turn your attention as you give your offering to the videos, I believe they're around volunteering and around missions. And God wants us to, uh, to live generous lives, man. Fear-free, generous lives. Does that make sense? Y'all good? Okay, cool. I'm going to pray for you. Could you stand? Holy Spirit, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. God, I thank you that as, as Haley spoke out of Colossians, that you want, uh, you fill us with your fullness, God. And in the place of fullness, there is no fear in, in generosity. There is no fear and generosity with our time. There's no fear and generosity with our love. There's no fear and generosity with our finances. I thank you, God, that you have come to fill us. You, the one who fills all in all. Thank you, God, for your fullness tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So will you come forward and, and bring your offering as you turn your attention to the screen as well? Well, hello, Bethel family. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming with some exciting, albeit early, holiday cheer. Your first ever holiday volunteer church news takeover starts right now. Well, holidays are a time to celebrate Jesus through gratitude and joy and generosity. And we're excited to highlight special opportunities to volunteer and invest into our community this season. It's about to get very merry in here. Here at Bethel, we do something special every year, our Thanksgiving celebration. We do this on Thanksgiving Day, and Outreach has asked us to partner with them and what they're doing. And what you can do is this, donate some food or donate clothing, 
or you can volunteer and prepare and serve a home-cooked meal on Thanksgiving Day. So bring that donated food and clothing on Sunday to the Hebrews Lobby on the 13th and the 20th. And go to Bethel.com forward slash holidays for like a full list of all that we've got going on. Every year, Bethel is privileged to welcome hundreds of international students and they don't go home for Thanksgiving. They need a place to go. Yeah. Maybe your house. Yeah, so if you would like to invite an international student to your Thanksgiving dinner, we just ask that you sign up by November 15th. Reading Garden of Lights is happening again this year. And if you've never been, it's spectacular. The lights are beautiful, the people there are amazing, and it's an incredible atmosphere for you to go with your friends or your family to enjoy all that it has for the holidays. But we need volunteers and other folks in the city yeah. also volunteer. There are shifts Wednesday through Sunday, November 18th through the 8th of January. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to have you come out and just uh, to help be a part of this. Mm -hmm. There's a payoff as well, not just being a good citizen. Dinner's also provided and there's giveaways for volunteering. Mm -hmm. For more information, go to Bethel.com forward slash holidays. Well, that happens every year. <laughs> well, much as I myself have been transformed in this kind of uh, elf, Handsome. thank you, elf leisure suit. I think it's a great look. Yeah. We'd like to invite you to come help transform our campus into a Chris. Christmas Wonderland. There's a tear in your eye. There's a tiny tear. You could help us on November 29th and the 30th. Those are the time slots to make our campus look like Dan, like Christmas. This is a lot of volunteering. That's a whole chunk of volunteers. But yeah. we thought instead of like rolling them out one by one, we present them all. You can look at your calendar, decide where you or your family can be involved. And another place for you to be involved is the Bethel Bazaar. Yeah, it's a wonderful time. There's uh, just local craftsmen, great Christmas gifts. It's going to be a terrific day. There's opportunities to volunteer in setting up for it on Friday, December 2nd, and then being involved on the 3rd, on Saturday as well. Yeah, it's an incredible experience. So if you're looking on where to do that, it's the same place. All the other opportunities to volunteer Surprise! are found. Bethel.com forward slash holidays. For your convenience. Our 27th annual holiday Ooh. feast is coming up. It's a wonderful opportunity. We invite the community in, have a wonderful meal, stuff for the kids. It's a terrific day. We need several hundred volunteers yes, to pull it off. We do, but I also heard there's something unique about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I met my wife. It was at the at the holiday feast, and it was our meet cute. I don't know what that means. Young people do. Okay. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. I hope the we, thousand opportunities there's a lots volunteer. of opportunities. Hope we left enough time for the preacher today. Well, we have those thousand opportunities to volunteer because the work we do during the holidays really matters to us and to our city. Yeah, it's a blessing. Yeah. So we invite you to be a part and look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, you can sign up at Bethel.com forward slash holidays or go to the Hebrews lobby today to connect with someone. Since 2017, the insurgency in Mozambique has been blamed for more than 3,000 deaths, with more than 800,000 people displaced and more than 1 million in need of food aid. There are even reports of beheadings of children as young as 11, 12 years old. Here is Al-Shabaab, a homegrown insurgency now linked to the Islamic State group with a taste for abductions and butchery. Mozambique is a very, very poor country. It's the eighth poorest country in the world. And Cabo Delgado, the northernmost province, is the poorest province in the country. It's a humanitarian crisis that the rest of the world has ignored. Many of our friends have lost their homes. They've been burned down. Others have lost their lives. But we are empowered by love. And because we're empowered by love, will continue to go. We're gonna to continue to go low and slow. You can't stop us because love wins. Instead of being overwhelmed by a world filled with so much pain where extremists come and 
war happens, instead of being overwhelmed by that, we're empowered by the love of a God who is love to stop for the one in need. In case you didn't catch that uh, at the beginning, did, did I get this thing on? Are we good? That's a trailer of, an, of a documentary that is being released, and we get to actually be the ones to, to show it. What do you call that again? When you... Global premiere. Global premiere. I should have. I'm sorry I didn't have that together before I got up here. Y'all, what a transition. I know, like, hang in there with me. We're seeing Dan in a elf costume or something, and then we're seeing the reality of the world in Mozambique right now. And we can, we can do both in this moment because what we're going to do right now is we're going to uh, continue in that place where we've already been, where we attach our faith to where Jesus is seated in heavenly places, in his position of authority, and we're seated with him in that place. And from that place, we get to intercede together for Mozambique. And we'll give you more details on when that, that movie or the documentary is gonna be shown next week. But the title of it, Nefento, actually means love in the Makua language. The Makua is one of the people groups in that area of Cabo Delgado where the, the extremists have been uh, wreaking, wreaking violence for months, for years, actually. So first, I just really, I'd love to press in a little bit more with y'all into intercession. And if you would, can you just stand with me? Let's get in a position. Let's remember our authority seated with Christ in heavenly places. As Haley said earlier, we're gonna attach our faith to where Jesus is in victory, where he is in victory. And I wanna start with gratitude. I'd like us all individually actually just close your eyes and, and start speaking out things that you can be grateful for because of the Lord's faithfulness. That's where I'd love to press in right now. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness for those who are in such pain in Mozambique. Jesus. Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, we exalt you. We do not agree and we do not partner with the slime and the sludge of the pit, with the discouragement of that kind of news, with the heaviness of that news. We say we do not partner with that, Lord. We are above it with you in victory. Thank you, Jesus. I wanna tell you that the people in Mozambique, actually so many have opened their hearts to Jesus. They've been in this place of terror for years and their hearts have been soft. Their hearts are opening to Jesus. Many, many, many are coming to salvation. For that, we're so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, I'd just like for us to press into the need for, for perseverance, for wisdom. So let's, let's pray that corporately. Jesus, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus, that you hear our cry. Thank you that we can even whisper out our desperate need to you, Lord, and you hear every single whisper. You see every tear, every tear, every broken heart, Lord, every broken family. Jesus, we cry out just for wisdom for our Iris family and for other missionaries who are there, Lord, that they would know how to navigate this. Thank you for your faithfulness, that you provide food for thousands and thousands. Thank you that you make a way for containers of supplies and food to come to the people who are in need. Thank you, Lord, that you create a way on the road for them to get safely past the terrace. Thank you, Jesus, that you actually make a way for them to get to safety. You are a light in the darkness. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, the, the Bible says that 
when light, Jesus, came into the world, you know, darkness could not understand it, it could not overpower it. Thank you, Jesus, you are the light of the world. God, we ask for a radical breakthrough in Mozambique right now. Jesus, that for every individual who's experiencing such fear right now, that they would sense your tangible peace covering them, touching them. They would sense your tangible peace. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. And God, I do just ask for a special just uh, boost in the spirits of, of those in our, in our missionary family who were just laying their lives down every day. Our Mozambican brothers and sisters, as well as as Mama Ida and Papa Roland and their team. Jesus, we pray for the evangelism that's happening even in the jails right now, Lord. We just, we thank you that you can bring good out of anything. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we praise you. Praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you know Hebrews chapter 12 we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And I wanna tell you, we stand in this country in incredible freedom. Uh, we, we, we can worship God freely tonight, but so many places in the world, our brothers and sisters are under persecution. The country where we served for many years, uh, the day that we got kicked out, a, a local brother got put into jail and he's still there. And that's the reality, but we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And do you know that that when Mao came into China and the house house churches, the church had to go underground, 40 years later, it was the biggest explosive revival in history in China, where now there are more Christians in China than Communist Party members. In... In, in 1980, there was a, uh, an Islamic revolution in Iran that took the country way back uh, as far as freedoms. And do you know that today the fastest growing church in the world is where? In Iran. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. In, in the year 2000, there were floods all across Mozambique that devastated the country, but God's people, Iris, many other missionaries were there to be God's hands and feet, and we saw one of the most explosive growths in church history in Mozambique. So right now, what's going on in Mozambique is terrible, but as we heard from Heidi, love always wins. And the gospel is coming in on this storm. Satan has overplayed his hand and we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, amen? So here, here's the exhortation for us. You know, chapter 11, it talks about faith, it talks about heroes of the faith, you know, the ones that had all the breakthrough. And then at the end of the chapter, it talks about the heroes of the faith that actually were martyred. And it says this, it says the world was not worthy of them. And right now in Mozambique, we're having a lot of our brothers and sisters being martyred. And the challenge I think for us is let's intercede, let's pray. This next week especially, next Sunday is the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. So we just want to highlight this to you. Let's pray, let's intercede. And then also in Hebrews, it says this, Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. It kind of puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Like the things that we struggle with are real, but let's run with endurance. Amen? And as far as informing ourselves too, we get to to host the global premiere of this documentary uh, this coming Saturday night in the great room. Doors open at 6.30. Uh, the, the documentary begins around 7. But we're going to get to to watch the whole documentary. And then we're going to get to really press in in prayer again. So uh, how many of you know that we serve a God who always wins? <laughs> 
2 Corinthians 2 says this, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Amen? All right. Have I forgotten anything? No, you got it. Okay. Tonight, we have the incredible privilege of hearing from Richie Gordon. And there's, there's, there's a lot of things that could be said about Richie, but recently I had someone in my office and she was telling me about Richie and she said this, she said, I never knew someone could love Jesus so much. And I, I just thought of, of all of the things, you know, what a testimony. And I want that to be said of me too, don't you? So would you welcome Richie Gordon tonight? Oh, how we love you. You are the one our, our hearts adore. Oh, Jesus, we love you. And oh, how we love you. You are the one our, our hearts adore. And Jesus, we love you, every voice. And oh, how we love you. You are the one our. Our hearts adore, oh, Jesus, we love you, and Jesus, we love Come on, choir, and oh, how we love you, and you are the one now, yeah, my heart adore, yeah. Jesus, we love you, Woo! and oh, how we love you, oh, Jesus, you are the one, yes, my King, my King, my heart at all, yeah, and Jesus, we Every voice and oh how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. Just ever so softly sing Jesus we love you. Jesus we love I give you permission to encounter Jesus tonight. We love you. Couldn't hear a word I say, but if you encounter the Christ, oh, that would make me so happy. My heart's adorn, oh Jesus. And Jesus, we love. Turn to someone next to you and say, You look so much like Jesus. Sniff the person next to you and say, you smell like Jesus. Slap the person next to you and say, God is going to encounter you tonight. Oh, I feel faith in the room, yeah. 
Don't wait for me, just grab him, grab him. Oh. Every hand lifted in this place. Oh. And Jesus, we love you. Lift your voices. Oh, how we love. Oh. And you are the one. Oh, come on, quiet. It's gonna be a wild night. <laughs> the wild night. Heart. You're gonna get all the Brazilians to come on stage quickly. Jesus, we love you. Come all over here, just sit over here, sit over here. All up, quick, 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 come, quick, quick, quick. Yep, yep, there's a lot of them here. <laughs> Come just sit down all over here. Just sit all over here. Turn to someone next to you and say, God's going to mark you like a Brazilian. If you're watching online, we love our Brazilian people. Turn to someone next to you and say, Jesus is going to encounter you tonight. Why don't you look at the carpet and say, carpet, we are going to be friends tonight. <laughs> it, was, it was about three, four days ago and I messaged Paula and I said to her, I had a dream, Paula. Then we gathered the Brazilians and we started to pray for Brazil on Sunday night. And she messaged me back, said, Rich, you don't understand. Brazil is in the midst of an election and it closes on Sunday night. And they just got the results about an hour and a half ago from the election. We are standing in the precipice between an in-between time, a transition from old to new. And let me tell you, God's eyes are upon the nation of Brazil. I want you to agree with me in faith that God would touch that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quero que você concorde comigo em fé que o Senhor está com as mãos nesse país. Brazil, we see you. Brasil, nós te vemos. We see the call of God on your life. Nós vemos o chamado do, do Senhor na we sua vida. We see the call of revival. Nós vemos o, o chamado do fogo do Senhor. We see the hand of God upon you. Nós vemos you. a mão do Senhor sobre o Brasil. And God says, I love Brazil. E o Senhor diz, eu amo o Brasil. And some may think. E eu coloquei a minha mão. That his hand would lift up. E a mão dele não se levantou. And God says no. E o Senhor diz mais. My hand will be on Brazil. A minha mão estará no Brasil. Even after this transition Mesmo of power. Mesmo transição de poder. Even over this new president. Mesmo com esse novo presidente. The hand of God a will be on the nation. A mão do Senhor está na sua nação. God, you spoke through a donkey. Jesus, o Senhor falou através de um jumento. God, use us. O Senhor pode Use Brazil, God. Use o Brasil, Senhor. I see a turning of a chapter. Eu vejo uma mudança de capítulo. The clock is waiting from 12 turning to 1. O, o relógio mudando de 12 para 1. And the Lord saying it's time, it's time, it's time. E o Senhor está dizendo, é chegada a hora, é chegada a hora, é chegada a hora. I see an apostolic spirit resting on the place. Eu vejo um espírito apostólico descansando sobre o Brasil. And I see revivalists coming from that nation. Eu vejo avivalistas vindo dessa nação. And getting sent around the world. E sendo enviados por todo o mundo. Declare the next four years. Eu declaro nos próximos quatro anos. Very significant for Brazil. Vai ser muito significativo para o Brasil. Em nome de Jesus, Senhor, nós declaramos sobre o Brasil essa manhã, o Senhor Join me disse, assim como foi na cruz, quando o inimigo olhou e ele disse, eu venci o Senhor, e a ver, ele riu, e ele disse, a vitória é minha, 
e hoje o Senhor disse, a vitória é minha, é chegado o momento de um grande avivamento pelo Brasil, levantando do solo do Brasil, levantando do solo irá curar toda a nossa nação, eu vejo como um fogo e vem do Nordeste, ele começa no Nordeste, o Senhor é Senhor do Nordeste, o Senhor é Senhor do Centro-Oeste, do sudeste, do sul e do norte nós declaramos a mão do Senhor sobre o Brasil Ele disse, watch me me veja, veja a minha mão veja o que acontece quando a minha mão está sobre uma nação e a minha mão está sobre o Brasil eu sou o rei do Brasil eu sou o rei do Brasil I am the king over Brazil I am the king over Brazil eu sou o rei do Brasil watch me Watch me, the Lord says, watch me, watch me, watch what happens when my hand is over a nation. Watch what happens when the hand is over a nation. Olha o que acontece quando a minha mão está sobre uma nação. Obrigada, Jesus. Obrigada, Jesus. Now stretch your hands out to the Brazilians over here. Coloque suas mãos em direção aos brasileiros aqui. When God touches one, it's because he wants to touch many. You have been brought here. Vocês foram trazidos para cá. To Redding, California. Para Redding, California. To pick up a spirit of revival. Para receber o espírito de avivamento. And to bring it back to your nation. E para levar de volta para sua nação. And as we stretch our hands out. E coloque suas mãos em direção a eles. We declare God. Nós declaramos Deus. Would you awaken something in them? Desperta algo neles, Senhor. Would you rise them up, God? Marque o Senhor. Fire, God. Desperta o Would Senhor. Would you mark them with your glory, God? Give the Lord a clap like he's changing Brazil. Just move them just on the sides here. And then can I clear this space just a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Turn to someone next to you and say, it's already a wild night. <laughs> oh, turn to someone next to you and say, I'm so glad you came. You guys can If you are a pastor or on leadership uh, at Bethel, I want you to stand very quickly. Worship leaders, admin, yeah. Shit, 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 shit. I was struck coming here just how this house has changed my life. I, uh, I came very broken and hurt from the church. And it was here that I got healed. It was here that I got restored to ministry. It was here that people saw me and celebrated me. It was here where people created space for me even though I was crazy. It was here and because of this leadership team. And uh, I know you guys know this, but we're part of a beautiful thing together. We are part of a beautiful thing together. I never thought in a million years that I'd be sitting trying to sing while Jen Johnson is playing behind me. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have some fun tonight, Jen. <laughs> it says in the Bible, if you honor your mother and father, it'll go well with you and you'll live long in the land. Honor is not for the person you're honoring in the spirit realm, it's switcheroos. If you honor a mother and father, it goes well with you, and you live long in the land. In a moment, I want you to give, I'll count on three, I want you to give these guys the biggest, craziest shout and, and clap. Not, it's gonna feel very natural, but actually in the spirit, Something is shifting over your life. 
It's gonna feel like cheers and loudness. If you're in your living room, it's gonna feel like, ah. Oh. But actually, as the scriptures say, if you honor a mother and father, this would be authority figures here. It'll go well with you. Something shifting over your life. So in three weeks, you're gonna go absolutely wild for this leadership team. One, two, and three. Woo! <laughs> Bam, bam, bam. Yay! Yay! Thank you. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Yay! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yay! Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. Oh man. Oh, it feels good in here. <laughs> oh. If you came for Leaders Advance, give me a little wave. God's gonna get you. This week, God's gonna get you. So glad you came. So glad you came. I'm gonna share and then it's gonna get really beautifully wild. From John chapter 20. Oh, you feel that? Oh. Oh, Jesus. Shit. Oh. Oh. It was early in the morning, at the breaking of dawn, Mary, she woke up and she gathered the spices to go and pray at the grave. So loyal that even after Jesus died, was crucified, actually executed. So loyal, she still went down. Even though he, in her eyes, didn't fulfill what, he, what she thought he was came to fulfill. And the closer she got to the grave, that fragrance of death coming near, she saw something wild. The stone had been rolled away. And standing right there were these two pillars of light. These two angels stood there and they said, Mary, why are you crying? For he has risen. Oh, Jesus, you still roll stones today. Aren't you thankful? Woo, good, Jen, keep going. stones today and you still roll stones away oh you still roll stones today oh you still roll stones away some people are getting free tonight oh you still
And the angel said, go and tell the disciples. And so Mary, she ran to these men, a woman in a man's world running to these men. And she says, they have taken him. He has risen. And all of them almost like bewildered. They said they start running towards the tomb. And it says that all the disciples got there before Peter. So I think Peter was fat. (laughs) And they're all waiting outside the tomb for the leader to get there. And fat Peter just gets there just in time. (laughs) And Peter goes in first, fat Peter. And he sees the linen, the head cloth right there laid and folded, perfect. He sees with his own eyes, he's not there. He's been taken, he has risen. All the disciples come in after fat Peter and they start looking and they're like, look, he has risen. They leave that place and there is Mary and she strolls into a garden. And while she's in this garden, she's crying. She's actually saying, where have they taken my Lord? Where did they take him? Where did they take him? And while she's crying in a very normal place, what she thinks is a gardener comes up to her. And in the face of familiarity, he says to her, Mary, it's me. the greatest moment of Christendom, the revealing of the risen Christ, the revealing of the one that uh, is fully God, fully man, the one that has destroyed death, beaten death, taken the keys of authority and raised up. Death has been defeated. Sin has been defeated. And how does he do this big reveal? How does the Bible do the big reveal? Oh man, we're launching another campus. We gotta do big fanfare. We gotta do big marketing. We gotta just push, push, push all those promos, get that person to share that and that person to share that. This is the greatest story ever told. The raising of the dead. The raising of the Christ. And He chooses to do it in an ordinary garden. Through the face of a gardener with a woman that would be disqualified. If you give you context for Mary, she was a woman in a man's world where men took leadership in that mess in that time. She was one that carried seven demons before. And so the spiritual community probably wouldn't trust her. And she was one that was a prostitute in her previous life. So the world, the rumors of her, they probably wouldn't trust her either. And God says, that's my choice right there. God, that is a terrible idea. No one will believe her. No, that's the one that will carry the greatest story ever told. Turn someone next to you and say, there's hope for you. (laughs) Uh, Turn someone next to you and say, revival's coming out of Brazil. Turn someone next to you and say, there's wild hope for Bethel Church. (laughs) <laughs> I just got back from doing a, a, a conference in uh, Phoenix and then I was with Jesus Culture School yesterday and while I was in Phoenix I met a man and he was a pastor and he started to tell me a story and he started to say Rich I was a bank robber I robbed a bank and I stole all this money I was a drug dealer, I was a drug runner, I stole it for drugs. And then I got radically saved. 
a man led me to the Lord right uh, on the street. He led me to the Lord and he invited me into his home. I thought I was gonna stay there three days. I ended up staying months with him. He was a pastor. And he said to my friend Joe, he said, you need to go and confess. And Joe was like, no, <laughs> I'm gonna go to prison. He said, no, you need to go confess. I'll come with you. So Joe and this pastor walk into the bank and they go there and he tells his story and he confesses to the bank, uh, the bank manager. And the bank manager said, this, wow, I can't believe that you've come. But by law, we have to prosecute you and send you to the feds. So after two years of um, his court date getting pushed, he arrives in court and uh, the judge stands before him and here's his case. And then he says to him, you should be spending 10 years in jail. The way the court sees this is the robbery, um, we judge almost the same. I don't see any difference between uh, you robbing a bank by gunpoint or you just taking all the money like you did. And so the law says that you are um, expected to have judgment, but then the judge said this, Mercy triumphs over judgment. And today, today you will not be going to jail and you're gonna go on probation and you're gonna pay that money back. And then he looks at him and he says, your life will count for God. Today, Joe is a pastor in Phoenix, Arizona. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? Joe is a bad idea. God, why? Why choose a bank robber to be a pastor? That's a terrible idea, God. That's awful. Why do it? It's a story of the gospel. You may not be a bank robber, but let's be honest, you don't have it all together. <laughs> Let's be honest, you, you haven't got everything together. But if you can use a bank robber, my word, he can use you. <laughs> if he can use a woman, previously a prostitute filled with seven demons, well, I think he could use you. Isn't that good news? <laughs> I was... Uh, Eight years old when depression started in my life. I remember believing a lie at eight years old that I was unlovable and it was very difficult for me to be loved. And from eight years old all the way through my teens, I struggled with suicidal thoughts. I remember crying myself to sleep many nights as a little kid, as like a 10 year old, a 12 year old, crying myself to sleep, wishing that I wasn't in this world, but I could leave. I had such social anxiety that if I was in front of more than four people, I would have a stammer and a stutter. I remember um, when I was about 14, I had a couple friends and we said, wouldn't it be wonderful for us to have a girlfriend? Or, and I was like, man, if I just had a girl that was a friend, I would be like, I would be like over the moon. <laughs> I was a bad idea. My dad, six degrees, my mom, four degrees, came from a heady background. My sister's got a double master's and a PhD. My brother's got a double master's and a PhD. And I, I've got a, a master's in electronic engineering and six international publications, and I'm the least educated in the family. <laughs> but I came from a heady background. And the first time I walked into a church, I was 17 years old. It's the unlikely bad idea. But as I walked into the back of that church, they started to sing and it was like the presence of God came all over me. And I felt Him. And I said to myself, holy beep, I think this thing might just be real. And I pursued the divine until I fell desperately, wildly in love with a man by the name of Jesus. Oh, 
Sermons don't change lives. Jesus changes lives. Songs don't change lives. Jesus changes lives. Church, it's about Jesus. Preaching, it's about Jesus. Oh, don't you love Jesus? And uh, I started to, um, I pursued God radically. And then Libby dragged me to a prophetic meeting. I met Libby, first spiritual Christian I'd ever met. She was the window of the more of God to me. I was like, what is this magic? She uh, would walk in rooms, she'd start talking about God, and the whole atmosphere would start to change. She would know details about people's lives. She'd put her hand on people, and suddenly they get healed. I remember going to bed one day saying to myself, thinking to myself that scripture, unbeknownst to uh, you, you, you sometimes entertain angels. And I thought maybe in this window of my world, I was entertaining an angel. And I married that angel. And I always joke and I say, our children will be the Nephilim. I'm joking. <laughs> L- Libby doesn't like when I tell that joke. I'm like, <laughs> Meeting her shifted something in my life. Walking into that church shifted something in my life. The spirit realm is more real than the natural realm. And tonight, something's gonna shift in your life. Honestly, either we are all stark raving mad, crazy, screaming, Brazil! singing top of our lungs Ah, either we are stark raving mad or that spirit realm is real and when it's touched that natural realm gets affected she dragged me to this prophetic meeting and I went in as a conservative Christian and I uh, watched as people were flying out out under the power of God and this minister started to say God is releasing mantles in the room I don't know what a mantle was. I was like, that's the thing under your fireplace. Why is God hitting people with mantles? And he said, there's a mantle for worship. And these people flew, flew out. And I was like, why did God hit them with a mantle? <laughs> and so I'm, I'm like absolutely mesmerized. But I was like, man, the, I've never felt the power of God like that before. And then he said, there's one more mantle coming in the room. And it's only going to come in a few people. And when it does, get out the way. And he says, it's coming in one, two, three, a mantle for signs and wonders. And I fell back two rows of chairs and I took out a section of people and two grannies. I got hit by that mantelpiece, bam. Turn someone next to you and say, God's gonna hit you with a mantelpiece. Oh, it's a fireplace mantelpiece. (laughs) And I went into an encounter. And for the next two to three hours, I shook under the power of God. I got lifted up and I saw a highway of glory and angels coming to feed me scrolls. And I would go on this highway of glory, accelerating, accelerating, accelerating. My mind was going, what are you doing, Rich? My body, I could not control, but my heart was exploding with love for Jesus. Oh. Jesus, we love you. I'll just give him a little affection right now. Oh, we love you, God. We love you. We love you. We love you. Church is all about you. Sermons are great, but God came for you. And for the next seven days, I shook under the power of God. And for the next seven days, I sweated under the heat of heaven. And I sat three hours a night, and I'd wake up praying out in tongues. And uh, something shifted in my life. After that day, after those seven days, I preached the exact same sermons. And now people are getting healed. I preached the exact same sermons to my Sunday school class. Now kids are falling out under the power of God. Something shifted in my life. 
Again, either we are stark raving mad, celebrating a shaking on the ground, celebrating a, an encounter of seeing a road. Either we are absolutely crazy or Jesus is real and that spirit realm is more real than the natural realm. And as soon as we touch it, it releases something in the natural. What is bound there suddenly gets bound here. What's released here suddenly gets released here. And know what he does? He doesn't just do it for you. What he does in you, he's gonna do through you. What he reveals to you, he's building a temple in you so that you could reveal that to the earth. Just like in the old covenant, that temple was so specific in measurement, so detailed, so structured, so that the glory could be hosted on earth. He's still intentional today. Every single moment with Him, He's building something in you. There's no coincidence why God touched you there, touched you there. He's building a temple. What He reveals to you, He will reveal through you. And so I had an encounter for seven days. I didn't just have a story to tell. I have now become an encounter. I've become a walking Christ encounter. And now people I met, I've, I've lost count, probably about 3,000 stories of first time encounters with the Lord. I was just at a kid's camp and there was, uh, if any of those kids were at that camp, give me a wave. Come up and tell, tell them how it was, come up quickly. And I was at this kid's camp and I was gonna, I was gonna preach, I was gonna preach on light in the darkness and, and it was camp, you know, camp and, I don't know what age is, probably 10 to 14. Were you there? Come up. Yeah, come up. And, uh, yeah, come over here. Where's Lorenzo? Lorenzo, come here. Just. Uh, and I remember we hit the lights, and I was going to preach at nighttime. I took a big torch, and I hit the lights to preach on the lights and the darkness, and all these kids got filled with the Holy Spirit. And for the next two and a half hours, the power of God started moving. We lost the meeting. It wasn't it crazy? Tell them a tiny bit of what it was like. Um, <laughs> Wait, how old are you? What's your name? Oh, I'm Hannah Wilson. My name, oh, <laughs> my name is Hannah Wilson and I'm 12 years old. And um, do I say what school I go to? No, you don't. Oh, uh, she, she asked me, she, does she need to tell everyone what school she goes to? I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, what was it like at the camp? Uh, basically, what happened is we were, it, worship went long, and then um, uh, someone came up and announced Rich, and then um, the lights went out. Like, I don't think the power went out, but someone turned the lights off, and once the light went off, it was kind of like a snap. I heard someone snap, and then everyone just fell over. It was completely crazy and um some of my friends who I don't think would ever cry in their whole life had their first encounter and they were just weeping under the power of God and um then we went back to our cabins and everyone was just still weeping and people were up until like crazy hours in the night just under the power of God and then um I just like I could sometimes I could like hear a faint like whimper it was kind of weird but like um, <laughs> I felt like a lot of um peace especially me I was just kneeling in the front and I didn't really feel like a ton at first but then um Richie prayed over me and I just started screaming in the power of the Holy Spirit and uh that night that night I lost my voice uh <laughs> but uh that camp was one of the most powerful camps I've ever been to and Richie said it was the most powerful meeting he's ever spoken so <laughs> wow isn't that beautiful? Woo! <laughs> oh, there's lots of you that are here. <laughs> Lorenzo, come just right behind her over here. Come step one step forward. Holy Spirit, we ask that your glory would rest on Hannah right now. God, I pray for a fresh fire to rest on her. God, we ask in Jesus' name that you would pour out your fire on her. You're raising up a young prophet, God. You're raising up a young prophet in our day. God, I thank you for the deposit from her parents that are going into her. And Jesus, I ask for the anointing of God to rest on her. Someone else that had a, their first kind of like crazy encounter. Yeah, tell them. What's your name and how old are you? Uh, 
Lydia, and I'm 11 years old. Okay. Um, I remember he was doing this weird experiment. I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was fun. But um, when it happened, this this camp was like the first time I've really encountered God, like truly, and um, just the Word of God and His peace and just His presence was filling the room and so many people around us. So it would just be like a wave of fire. We'd pour buckets on people and they would go crazy. And I think that was the time I accidentally fell on him. <laughs> Did, was I the one who fell on you? I think, yes, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I was just feeling God so, so much. Oh. Man, wild, give the Lord a clap like he's moving. <laughs> Someone else that got, look what's happening over here. Fire of God on it right now. The fire of God. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> Donna, you like that, eh? Fire of God. <laughs> Come over here. I remember you got radically touched. Tell, tell us what happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell us your name. I'm Emily, and I'm 12 years old. And, um... Everything was like really normal at first. We were just praying for everybody. And then as someone turned off the lights and then everybody started um, crying and me as one of them. And yeah, that was like my first encounter with God. One of, my, one of the biggest ones. Wow, that was your first encounter ever with God. Like one of the biggest ones. Biggest one, wow. And what do you think God is doing in you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> What's the first thing that came to your mind? Uh, I'm building like my relationship. Jesus. Oh, give the Lord a clap. Woo! <laughs> Isn't that wild, eh? Yeah. Anyone else had, a, had their, yeah, come over here. Um, at this camp, I was freed from depression and anxiety. Give the Lord some love. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Send so someone next to you and say, isn't Jesus wonderful? My name is Nora, and I'm almost 14 years old. And I remember you. Whoa, that was wild. <laughs> um, so I've actually struggled with suicidal thoughts and depression for about a year and a half. And at there, there was a moment when the lights went out, and like Hannah said, there was like a snap, and I felt like this weight lift off of my like my chest and my shoulders. And ever since that camp, I felt like this significant peace like over and over again. So. Yeah. Give the Lord some praise. Oh, we love you, God. We love you, God. Uh, Hannah, can you come and pray for her? Yeah, come up and pray for her. Come up and pray for her. Stand over there just in case you fall. Right over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just turn your affections to Jesus. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Anything is possible here. <laughs> Man, we should just turn off the lights and see what happens. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy, eh, Gabe? <laughs> the streaming people would even get touched. Who would, would one of you want to share? Yeah, okay. he says, why not, why not, why not? Um, I'm Josh and I'm 13. <laughs> And so this was my first encounter, and it was probably the biggest thing that happened to me for the majority of my life. Wow. And what do you, th what do you think God was doing? And what, ha what happened? What happened? So um, when the lights turned off, it was just like, I don't know what happened, but it, everything changed. It was like, you, the room was on fire. It was glowing. It was, it was weird. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Keep Bethel weird, keep Bethel biblical. 
That was Dan Farrelly. He told me that's the coin, that's the phrase he coined. Tell him what you think God is doing in you. Um, I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, what's the first thing that came to your head? Freeing other people. Freeing other people. Come on, Jesus. Oh, I like you. 13th. And that was the most, one of the most significant things that have ever happened in your whole life. Give the Lord a clap. Eh? Oh, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Anyone else? Did you want to share? Yeah, come. Come over here. So that night was like really crazy. And the, the testimonies were even more crazy the next day. Uh, like... Quite a bit of people shared testimonies, and I just thought it was really cool about how many people got saved. Wow. That's fun. And did you feel like God was doing anything in you? Yeah, I heard him say that I was a good friend. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, that's beautiful. Turn to someone next to you and say, you're a good friend. <laughs> Did I miss anyone? Ava, do you want to share? Come on. Give it up for Ava. Holy Spirit, we ask your glory would rest on Ava right now. God, we ask that your fire would rest on her right now. God, you are raising and anointing her. The Lord says it's time to yield. And there's a, I see the fire of God moving through you in a significant way. God, put a call to her lips, God, anoint her, God, that her lips and her words would carry fire, God. In Jesus' name, more, God, more, 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 more. Under the anointing, tell them what, what happened. <laughs> the Lord's touching her. Isn't that wild? Whoa! <laughs> like the Kenneth Hagen days, right, Joe? So, um, basically, I had been asking the Lord for an encounter for a long time of just like, I really felt like I was supposed to cry, and God, just like, He was saying, like, I really feel like I'm gonna encounter you in joy. And so I heard that at the very beginning. And I ended up, um, and well, at the beginning you were like, the floor is gonna be your friend, and that ended up happening. So the floor ended up being my best friend, and it was so good because I really felt like the way I would have cried, it's like releasing all this pain. I felt like I was releasing all my pain with um, just laughing all of it off, and just like, it was, like chains breaking and burdens being lifted and then the next night the next night it was so good because i ended up crying through the whole thing and it just felt like this wave of um just peace and it just felt so good to be in the presence of the holy spirit oh isn't that beautiful isn't that gorgeous Oh, Hannah, come and, come and pray for her. What rests on your life, I pray would rest on her life. Honestly, either we are absolutely stark raving mad, we are crazy, or God is real, and He's shifting something in the Spirit over these people right here. Turn to someone next to you and say, God's shifting something over your life. Did anyone not get to go? I don't want to... Everyone went. Oh, look at you. You did so well. Wow, look at you. You've done so good. Hey, look at you. Fire a God on her. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Ooh. Honestly, either we are crazy, but you can't make this stuff up. The lights go out. There's probably about 70 people there. And the fire of God hits. And it was like the room was just, and for the next two and a half hours, the power just hits. And all these kids, and they wrote me all letters to say thank you. I got uh, about like 70, 80 letters. And no jokes, about 20, 25 plus, first time I'd ever experienced the power of God. Turn to someone next to you and say, you're going to experience God's power tonight. <laughs> God, 
God touched me and for seven days I had an encounter. I didn't just have an encounter. What God wanted to do in me, He wanted to do through me. You don't need to be touched just for you. You need to be touched for the nations. You don't need to encounter God just for this thing that you're struggling through. You need to encounter God for your family, for the business you're in. You need a touch from God. Shit. Put a hand on someone next to you and say, fire. <laughs> oh, Jen, I'm having such a good time with you. And if he, can, if he can touch a bank robber, he can touch you. And if he can mark a 11 year old, he can mark you. And if he can choose Mary Magdalene to carry the greatest gospel story ever, he can choose you. Nothing disqualifies you. You're a bad idea, but God loves you. It's crazy. Look at Saul. Saul's going around killing Christians. And God says, that's my man. That's a bad idea, God. That's my man. Israel was the chosen nation. God chose Israel not just for Israel. And a cloud manifest by day and a fire by night. And they were fed miraculous manna during the day to sustain them. God spoke to them uh, through the temple, uh, through the tent of meeting. They were a chosen nation which the Lord chose. But they were not supposed to just be the one chosen nation. God did in Israel what He wanted to do in all the nations. He chose one as an example and a doorway for all nations. You need to be touched by God. Jacob was wrestling with an angel. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he says, I will change your name from Jacob to Israel. Jacob, deceiver. Israel, one who triumphs with God. And from Israel, Jacob, the nation of Israel was born. From deceiver, the nation of the chosen people was born. The gospel is so intentional and so prophetic that it says, a Mary Magdalene, a Saul, a Jacob, a you, a bank robber, a crazy Richard Gordon. Woo! <laughs> 11 year old. I remember doing BCS and there was ages five to 10 there. And I remember saying to them, if you're hungry, stand up. And they all stood up, about a hundred of them. And then I said, rush the front. And they started rushing the front and the power of God hit. And for the next two hours, the glory just stood shaking, weeping, crying all over the ground. These five-year-olds to, uh, to 11-year-olds. My favorite, I got a video on my phone of the seven-year-old dragging a five-year-old out of the building because we had to get out of the room. Brad Clancy has taught me this, but God is not after manifestation. He's after connection. God didn't come to the earth for a manifestation. He came for a connection so that we have a connection with the cross, so we have a connection with the Father for eternity. He didn't come for manifestation. He came for connection. But when He comes, woo, I'm like... <laughs> I'm all in. So then someone next to you say, I'm all in. <laughs> yep. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Jane, lift your voice. Oh. Oh, 
I'm all in God. Oh, sing that. to him In our weakness, His power is made perfect. The Passion says, our weakness is a portal for His power. So He takes a Mary Magdalene who owns her story and power comes from it. And He takes a Jacob, a deceiver, owns a story and power comes from it. The best compliment I've received in a long time, when I was preaching in Phoenix, a 15-year-old came up to me and he said, I was in your meeting three years ago. You're different, Rich. You're freer than you ever were. And I was like, oh, I think I am. (laughs) The last three years, I've gone on a journey of embracing my weakness the fullness of my story and realizing I'm not perfect and God can use me. God can touch me. It was about two weeks later, I fall asleep after the seven day encounter. I fall asleep and I tell Libby, sorry, I tell Libby I'm gonna quit my master's degree Uh, I'm done. 16 people started, two people finished. And I fall asleep and I see the hand of the angel of the Lord come down. And the Lord said, this is a telecommunications algorithm for your master's degree. A scroll opens up. And the algorithm's there and it reads AODV. And I wake up in a cold sweat and I go to research it out and it turns out to be ad hoc, on-demand, distance vectors which is the shortest path telecoms algorithm in the cryptography space. Became the cornerstone of the book that I wrote and it got published in six countries. And I got flown around the world to speak at academia conferences and military conventions. I remember when I was in Denmark, I won best paper and America best paper. I'm a hit in India. That's where all my downloads are. I was uh, in a military, uh, I was the second to the keynote speaker in a military conference and the keynote was the defense minister of India and I was second because there was such glory on the work that got downloaded from heaven. And I had the head of the Navy, head of the Army, head of the Air Force in the audience, crazy. This insecure little boy, this little bad idea, but something shifted over my life. Something shift. We're in a season of the shift. And when I had that dream and that heavenly download, I didn't just, it wasn't just for me. Remember, God didn't choose Israel just for Israel. He chose Israel for the nations. 
God touched me with a technology download, I then became, I didn't just have a story to tell, my identity shifted. I became a walking encounter in the tech space. Fast forward, I end up coming to Redding, California, and I lay down my engineering career to become a revival group pastor here at BSSM. And I roll around the ground for three years as a pastor. Thank you, Mark Brooks, for the permission. Thank you, Leslie Crandall. And I loved it. And then comes into town Ryan Collins and uh, this crazy idea that we would start a technology school that marries revival and tech. And they said, is there anyone in our environment that knows revival and technology? <laughs> have you ever, <laughs> I guess, have you ever felt like God has, you've been written into a story? You'd be like a character written into a story. The gospel is so intentional. And it was a wrestle, but I, uh, pulled away from BSM and helped launch Bethel School of Technology because again, what God did in one, He wanted to do in many. And now we have over 700 alumni that have been raised up with the skill they'd never been able to code before, come from nothing, code, and then they get a job and we put revival culture inside of them and we seed them into the tech space. The space that people say is the dark place, well, that's where the light shines the brightest. I was touched. God gave a download to me, but just like Israel was touched, just like Jacob was touched, it was so that the nations could get touched. So that, how crazy, 700, you know, we have stopped counting the number of testimonies of our students that have got heavenly downloads of code in their dreams. What God did in one, He wants to do in many. You need to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Not just for you, for the nations. All the Brazilians in the room, you need to be touched by God. Not just for you, but for your nation. There's a shift in the spirit that's happening today. Either we're all crazy, like, yeah, he's shaking on the ground. If we are absolutely crazy, well, this thing is real. And if it shifts here, it'll shift here. I remember I was in Dave Harvey's revival group when I was in first year school of ministry. If any of you are thinking of coming to BSSM, come to BSSM, it changed my life. I remember going to Dave Harvey's revival group and he did this weird Christian thing. They put up a curtain in the middle of the room. There was a curtain up in the middle of the room and they said, okay, everyone in the side of the room. And uh, I was like, what is this weird Christian magic happening here? <laughs> and he says, okay, ask the Lord, what are two lies that you're believing? And so everyone asked and they said, okay, now ask the Lord, what are the two truths that you believe? And then he says, this curtain is not a curtain. It is a wall of fear. I want you to come up to this wall and shout the truth that God says of you because the truth will set you free. So one by one, these people start running up to this curtain and going, I will be an incredible mother. And they run through the curtain and they start crying. And I'm like, this is some crazy Christian stuff right here. <laughs> This is the type of stuff that happens at Bethel Church. I'm like, what is happening here? <laughs> and one by one, they start running through these curtains, this curtain, screaming the truth. Something was shifting in the spirit. And 50 people go through, I'm one of the last two, because I was full of pride. And by that time, it's basically peer pressure, Christian peer pressure. I'm like, I'm gonna look worse not doing it than I am doing it. So I'm like, oh, okay, fine. And the two lies I believe was, if I became significant, my life would become incredibly complicated. So I hid and hid and hid and hid. Look at me now. <laughs> and the other lie was that, uh, 
I would never have enough. I grew up in, um, uh, in a really poor home. First time I ever went to a restaurant, I was 14 years old. Um, first time I ever got a name brand piece of clothing. It was, uh, I was 15 years old. My parents made all of my clothes. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I could tell you story after story. And so I had this, this poverty spirit and the whisper that God gave me was this. You'll be a voice to a generation and you'll carry financial miracles. <laughs> you say so good, but I was like, nah, never. <laughs> I mean, that's some, I just heard that as a whisper. No, it can't be true, God. He loves to choose the bad ideas so that no man can boast, but that we could boast in Him. And so I'm like, okay, fine. I'm one of the last two people here. I will be a voice to a generation and I will carry financial miracles. And I ran through that curtain and I started crying. <laughs> Something shifted in my life after that. It was eight hours later, I was contacted by Bloomberg International and offered a finance position that when the government sector shifted, uh, how would the financial sector be impacted? And the New York office and uh, Bloomberg's New York office called me to fly me out for an interview. I'd been in America for two years. I'd never been contacted for a job for two years. And after I run through a curtain, after I run through a curtain and I combat the lie of significance and finances over my life, eight hours later, one of the most significant financial institutes in America reaches out to me. Either we are stark raving mad or that realm is more real than this realm over here. And in the next four weeks, I was offered a senior position at Amazon. I was offered a senior position at Dolby Digital. I was offered a senior position at GoToMeeting, which was the Zoom before Zoom, and a number of others. Some, I'd never been offered a position ever while I was in America. And I ran through a curtain. <laughs> Something shifted in the spirit. And a floodgate of favor hit my life. And Bill taught me, he said, every door of favor doesn't mean that you have to walk through it. It shows that God's hand of favor is on your life. Ended up working with Google shortly after that. They contacted me and ended up certifying the very first ever uh, YouTube application that gets embedded into a, um, you know, the smart TV and you have the YouTube app. The first ever African-based product that had the YouTube app integrated in and all while I was doing second year as well. Like, I'm like, no, while I was doing first year, because I ran through the curtain then. Man, how crazy is that? I ran through a curtain. And something shifted in the spirit and it released something in the natural. Turn to someone next to you and say, you need to run through a curtain. <laughs> Everyone's going like, I am dateable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if he says it, the truth will set you. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight, something's going to shift in the spirit of your family. Something is shifting in the spirit of a Bethel church. Something is shifting in the spirit over you and your finances. Something is shifting in the spirit over your relationship with the Lord. Something is shifting in the spirit of your connection to the supernatural. I want you to ask the Lord right now, what's that lie that I've been believing? It's been chasing you down for years and years and years, holding you back from greatness. Tonight we break up. And I'm not too impressed with the lie. I'm really impressed with the truth. I don't need to hear the whole story of your lie, but it's the truth that sets you free. 
ask the Lord right now, what's, you're, in, you're in this room, something could shift over your life. Ask the Lord, what's the truth right now? Let's play some crazy Christian games right here. And by faith, just ones and twos stand up and just shout it in the room. Shift something in the spirit. Something. Come on, God. Yes. Come on, more, more. Yes. Yes, God. Oh, for Got some devil damage happening here. Come on. <laughs> Yay! Get that pregnant woman, God. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh! You need to talk more. <laughs> yes, you are. You are valuable. Yes, you will. Come on, breakthrough is coming soon. The Lord is about to mark that lady powerfully right now. Yo, yo, somebody go to her. Go to her quickly. Fire a God on her right now. Oh, the Lord is on you right now. God, mark her with your glory, God. Fire, God. Shift in the Spirit. A shift in the Spirit. A shift in the Spirit. A shift. Fire, God. That's awesome, Jen. Fire, God. Come on, Bethel Church. <laughs> yes. Fire God. Yes, God. Yes, God. That whole section over where that, where that lady got touched. That whole section over there. Stand up quickly. That section right over there. Stand up quickly, quickly, quickly. That whole section where that lady got touched. Stand up. Raise your hands. The Holy Spirit is marking that section right there. Some of my team go to them. Fire God on them right now. God, we ask that you'd mark a people and shift something in the Spirit. Shift something in the Spirit right now. God, touch them. God, I declare with their finances and their family, God. A shift in the Spirit. A shift in the Spirit right now. More, God. More, God. Don't worry, He likes this side too. Someone else, someone else, get loud. Oh, my marriage is supernatural. Fire a God on that woman right there. My voice will be heard. Yes, God. Someone go and pray with her. Yes, God. Yes. 
Yes, someone's getting free. Someone's getting free there. Yes. Yes. Yo, somebody go and pray for that guy. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> oh, there she goes. Go pray for her. Either we all crazy or something shifting in the spirit right now. I need this. Like I said to those five-year-olds and 10-year-olds, if you're hungry for a touch from God, I want you to stand to your feet as quickly as you can. Open your hands. Come on, open your hands. Oh God, we ask for that holy fireplace mantle to come, God. Jesus, we thank you, God. Someone come behind these people. I need some, just in case these kids go. Jesus, I thank you for that holy fireplace mantle in this place. God, we are hungry for a touch from you so something would shift in the spirit that the natural space would be changed. Oh God, we celebrate when you move. We celebrate when you mark a people. God, we declare this week, even leaders advance, would be a shift in the Spirit. A shift in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that your fire would come upon hands and your fire would come upon hearts. And God, you would mark a people with glory right now. God, pour out your glory. Pour out your fire. Pour out your glory. Pour out your fire on people right now, God. God, touch them. Touch them, God. Touch them, God. And we sense the Lord on you in, in a unique way. I want you to rush the front as quickly as you can. In a unique way, just rush the front as quickly as you can. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I need some people to come help me with catching too. Don't go. Fire of God. 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 Oh, the fire of God is shifting the spirit of this young lady. Somebody mark her, God. The fire of God. Fire of God, don't wait for me. Put a hand on somebody and release the power. Fire of God, right now, the fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. I need some catches to come around with me if you can. Come around with me. Fire of God on her right now. Fire of God on him. Fire of God. 
fire of God on you right now. Right over here, fire of God, the fire of God here. Fire of God, fire of God, fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God all over here. Move God, fire God, fire of God, right here, the fire of God, fire of God, fire of God on the run of fire of God. Shit in my Raise your hands by faith. Close your eyes. God, we ask for the anointing to rest on it. Fire God, fire God, fire God, fire God. Fire God, the fire God, the fire God. People are getting touched in this place. Give the Lord a clap like He's moving. Fire God on this man, fire God. The fire God on her, fire God right now. The Lord moving on her, watch out. Fire God on her right now. Shit, tear, tear. Oh, something shifting in the spirit. Fire God oh, on no, Fire God. God. You satisfy. Oh, something I'm shifting in the spirit. Fire God. And you Fire satisfy. God. Oh, Fire God. Take it, take it, take it. And I just want more of you. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, we love Sing that, sing that, sing that. Oh, how we love. Oh. You are the one. Hard to do. Fire of God in this place. Jesus, Jesus, we love you. Oh, oh, how we love you. You are the one of our hearts adore. Every voice sing that with me. And Jesus, Jesus we love. Open your hands. The Lord's about to mark this young man over here. Open your hands. God, we declare the fire of God would rest on him, God. We declare you're raising up a young leader in the midst, God. Pour out your fire on him right now. God, mark him for the Holy Ghost. God, I declare encounters, encounters, encounters. Oh, the Lord. And all how we love, all you satisfy. God, right now, fire of God resting on him. Oh, your humility. Right now, and locked right now in Jesus' name. The fire of God just on this man. Oh, freedom's happening right now. Freedom's happening right now. Shit, take it. Antonio, and are you guys here? Come, come up quickly. Come over here. Bring your wife. Bring your wife. Wonderful Jesus, you are. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God. What a wonderful, wonderful. Come over here. 
right over here. The Lord says over you that there is a unique gift on your life that will be sent around the world. There's no one like you, a savant, and God's hand is on you for ministry, and it's going to be across across different streams, across different rivers, and the Lord's going to birth something so significant out of you. The Lord says, these are my people. These are my people. My hand is on you in a unique way. So God, we ask the fire of God would rest on her. The fire of God for in the church and outside the church. For in the church and outside the church. Even recently, the outside has even interests you more. The hand of God on her right now. Fire of God on her. God, anoint this man right now. The glory on her. The glory of God on the, on the savant, God. The glory of God on the Spanish king, God. Oh, Divine melodies, God. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God you are. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God you are. Man, I like you guys. <laughs> Can you give it up to this band? They've been here for hours here. <laughs> oh, man. Don't you just love Jen Johnson? Wow, that was just beautiful. Sing this last thing with me. Every hand lifted. Oh,
Lift it up, lift it up. Adore your king, adore your king. your hand on your neighbor. Let's sing this as one voice together to our King. Such a beautiful fragrance when you sing as one. Sing as one. We exalt you. We adore you, King Jesus. It's one more moment, one more moment. Give him your full attention, your full affection. bless what you're doing. <laughs> we just bless what you're doing. Just begin to bless your neighbor right now. Just bless what he's done in their life tonight. Thanks, God. Thanks, God. We just bless what you're doing. We just bless the shifts that are happening. We thank you, God. Donna had a word that he was unstucking people tonight, that if you've been stuck in the same rut, he is pulling you out of that stuck pattern into a new new place. And then Richie shared about a new realm and things changing forever. He actually feels like he's supposed to keep praying for people. So we're just gonna let the Lord keep moving and ministering. Why don't we just continue to bless what he's doing on your neighbor right now? Thanks God, thanks God. We bless what's happening in the person to our right and to our left. We thank you for shifting the atmosphere over their life, that you are bringing them into a season of breakthrough, into that incredible truth and freedom right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. If you've joined us online, we just 
we just pray for our online Bethel family that you would experience a radical encounter, a radical shift of the season that you're in in Jesus' name. We bless you. We thank you for joining us. We love you, our Bethel family online. Thanks, God. Can we thank Jen and the worship team for just blessing the Lord with us tonight? Thanks, God. Thanks, God. We're going to run a CD. And if you want prayer, Richard said go to the lobby or outside. He feels like he's supposed to pray for people outside. So here we go. The, the after party is going to be in the Hebrews lobby. Hebrews lobby, after party. I'm going to stay there and, and me and my team are going to pray for people to get radically touched. If you want, you can go there. And uh, do we need... We love you. Thanks.